Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel, The Ninth Cup, where all of my readings focus on your soul's destiny and everything you can do to embody your soul's purpose. This is a collective general reading for North Node and Scorpio. If your North Node is in Scorpio, this reading is for you. It is general. Just take what resonates and leave the rest. For those of you who are current subscribers, welcome back. Thank you for sharing your energy with me. And those of you who are new, welcome. My name is Karen Michelle Gearwood. I'm an intuitive guidance counselor and I help people like yourself along the Ascension journey. So as you can see, there's three piles here. I'm doing a pick a card format for the North Node readings just to try just, just to try something new and see what spirit has to share with you. Three piles. The first one is pyrite, also known as fool's gold. Second pile is a rough clear quartz. <clears throat> and the third pile is a polished aqua obsidian. So pick what stone resonates for you. Each pile has um, three oracles from my astrology oracle deck, three tarot cards. This reading I'm doing um, eighth house tarot deck. And then there are three cards from the Doreen Virtue Life Purpose deck. So we're going to see what comes out. North Node Scorpio. Um, those of you who are new to astrology and studying your own natal charts, you know, our North Node is our Dharma. It's our uh, soul's work in this human experience. So it can be challenging, can be fearful. Um, limitations and blockages can be surrounding that energy. However, South Node, opposite to the North Node is um, for you, Scorpio, and Taurus. So that's where your gifts and talents are. It's the energy of your comfort zone, which you do innately well. So it's really about balancing out this North and South Node to live the most abundant life that we can. Um, and yeah, really striving to live wholesome lives. So let's see what comes out for your reading, Scorpio. I'm gonna start with the first pile. So the um, pyrite, so first pile is um, again fool's gold so this is um your astrology cards which are uranus first house and pluto uranus first house and pluto some of you could have your north node in the first house pluto and uranus could have um you know significant maybe impact on your north node in your natal chart um or these are just energies that are kind of impacting you right now whenever you're seeing this reading we do have uranus retrograde in the sign of taurus and Pluto is still in the sign of Capricorn, still conjoining with Venus retrograde. So this first house also is telling me that you're really looking to transform or transmute, you know, really upend any feelings of, um, you know, not being good enough. The first house is our persona. It's how others view us. It's also, you know, our, um, our outer appearance. And with Pluto and Uranus here, it's like you're kind of coming to a point where, excuse me, you are ready to evolve into a higher way of presenting yourself. Um, and this could, this could be done in so many different ways. It is a general reading this, you know, cause Uranus is here. So you could be thinking of doing something kind of suddenly, like maybe like some, something just kind of came to you or you've seen an opportunity to change in some way, but the Pluto energy is more deep and transformative. So this tells me that, you know, whatever changes you do make are probably going to be, you know, in place or affect your life for years to come, you know, perhaps like a decade or more than that, 10 to 15 years, because that's the Pluto energy. Pluto transits any sign for, you know, 15 plus years. So, um, and Uranus stays in the signs pretty long too. I think like six years is his transit. So um, this is long-term changes. Even if they happen suddenly, they impact you. It's gonna impact you for a long period of time. Um, Pluto is also the modern ruler of you, Scorpio. And Scorpio, um, you are in that axis. The new, the nodes are shifting into Taurus and Scorpio. So with the new wave of eclipses that will be happening in the next 18 months, you will be impacted. Your North Node will be impacted because um, that's the axis it's on. So with that being said, many changes could have that Uranian feel to it because the eclipses quickly swift out or sweep out what's no longer needed to create space for something new to come in. Um, but, you know, Pluto is here. So again, you could already be doing the work or you could already be feeling this because we did have the first eclipse on that access the end of 2021 like the beginning of december so this energy could already be percolating um you know in in your uh, in your own cosmos in your own like natal chart and then um uranus transiting taurus too which is the other sign that the eclipses are in so you have that because that's your south node so uranus is transiting your south node the eclipses are going to um, impact um your nodes as well okay your north and south nodes the nodes transiting in the cosmos i hope i was clear sorry <laughs> all right so your tarot cards are a queen of air which is queen of swords eight of fire that's eight of wands 
Mercury and Sag energy. And five of Earth, that's uh, Mercury in Taurus. So, Queen of Air, Eight of Wands, Five of Earth, two or three different um, elements here. Air, fire, and earth. Okay. So with the queen of air, this could be you, like I was saying, going to the next level, evolving into a higher way of presenting yourself. You could be stepping into queen energy, male or female. This is just you, again, kind of embodying leadership, um, taking ownership over your own life, um, taking yourself more seriously. The queen of air is a queen that doesn't like to be effed with. She, you know, give it to her straight up. She's very blunt. She's to the point. Um, again, I say she, but it does not mean that, you know, you are a female. It's feminine energy. Eight of Wands is also fast-paced communication. So, or fast-paced movement. So some of you, so a part of that instant change I was channeling with the oracles, it could be you physically choosing to move last minute, like relocate or to take a trip of some sort that will be the trigger or the tipping point for something new in your life that's gonna change how people view you or change your, your title, your position, something like that. Five of Earth is here, Five of Pentacles. That is a feeling of being left out in the cold or it's a poverty mindset. But I think that this is what's being upended, you know, with the with the oracles um, being Pluto and Uranus and the nodes that are shifting into your sign and um, both your signs, excuse me, your North Node Scorpio and your South Node Taurus. That is, um, again, what you're coming out of. You could be like sweeping out the poverty mindset or the, you know, the mindset of you got to you know, work exchange, like time for money, like work, you know, hours for money instead of like really being valued and creating like, um, a stable, reliable source of income, you know, not necessarily the meaning of the cards here, but it just could be some of those changes that are coming in for you is what I mean. Clearing out that five of pentacles energy, doing something quick, um, or making a decision quickly, choosing something kind of on the cuff, but it's going to have long lasting effects. Beautiful energy. I love it. Um, and this is where, uh, not my nose, but my first house, seventh house access is because I'm a Taurus rising. So I have Scorpio over in the seventh house. So what do we have? Nutrition, teaching, and spiritual teacher. So teaching, spiritual teacher, maybe some of you are looking to be, um, or go into esoteric healing arts or holistic healing, and it could be through nutrition. You know, you could be teaching people how to, um, like, you know, balance their chakras with their diet or, you know, maybe heal certain ailments holistically, um, you know, eating less processed foods, that kind of a thing. Um, teaching people like the effects on certain like hormones in the food, you get my drift. Um, and again, stepping into like with that queen of air that maybe could be the spiritual teacher that I was channeling also with Pluto. Pluto is a very, um, you know, transformative and intense sign. So spiritual teachers, um, often embody that platerian energy, that scorpionic energy. So that could be um, what's happening for you. If it's not you, this could be who you're engaging with or who you're looking to to guide you and lead you um, through, you know, their teaching and their own philosophy and um, pedagogy. So I love this reading. I think this is like, you know, huge, big, exciting uh, changes coming in. Some you're ready for and some that may, again, happen kind of suddenly, but it's, you know, it's kind of like I'm getting an energy of like divine order, divine timing as well. So it's nothing to fear. It's nothing to be anxious about. I think it's just there are some changes that will happen um, suddenly and some that will be a little bit slower. But either way, um, huge shifts coming in for you. So I hope something there resonates and I'll see you in the next one. Second pile. This is the clear quartz. Your astrology cards are Taurus, Aries and the sixth house. Taurus, Aries in the sixth house. So Taurus, that's your south node energy. Aries could be um, prominent in your chart as well. And sixth house is um, the house of Virgo, but some of you could have your north node in the sixth house. And um, if none of that resonates, this is just the overall energy, I think, of doing the work to bring in more prosperity and abundance in your life. Taurus is the ruler over the second house. So that's your possessions, your assets, your money, um, you know, your home, like, you know, things you work for and you earn. And um, again, the sixth house is the house of Virgo, but it's also work, it's day-to-day -day activities, it's routines, it's, you know, um, you know, how we take care of ourselves, health and wellness. And Aries is that sign of initiation, of trailblazing, of, you know, doing the work and sparking something. So you could be doing this for yourself, you know, sparking a new daily routine, you know, we're at the beginning of a new calendar year, maybe you have a new diet, maybe you have a new uh, workout regimen, um, maybe you have hired a personal trainer and they could have that Aries energy, you know, that 
pushing you, you know, that fiery, passionate energy to get you in a place where, you know, you are more um, secure and your self-worth is um, increased because of that, you know, the way you value yourself. So this is gorgeous energy, um, you know, really doing the work to make solid, practical changes for yourself. Let's look at your tarot cards. We have Page of Air, which is Page of Swords. We have um, Mercury, oh, the Magician, which is Mercurial Energy. And uh, Eight of Earth, that's that Virgo energy, Sun and Virgo. So Virgo could be significant for some of you. Um, or like I said, Sixth House, you could have prominent placements there in addition to your North Node. So the Page of Swords, this is you learning, right? Pages are useful, um, something that's in its beginning initiation phases. So maybe you're just now learning how to, you know, eat more healthy or you're learning how to, you know, balance out working out and rest, you know, learning what works for your body since that's such a nuanced thing. But the Magician energy is, um, you know, it's Mercurial energy and Mercury is the ruler of Virgo. So there is that. Um, and it's manifestation and the thing with the magician is he uses all of the tools available to him. I say him, but it doesn't have to be a male. Um, it's just masculine energy. But the magician takes, you know, everything at his disposal. You know, he, he has all of his tools and he's using that to manifest. So many of you could be using um, the prior knowledge or using, you know, tools from something else and really using that somehow in your day to day. Um, for example, if it is like the exercise regimen I was mentioning, maybe, you know, maybe you, if it's not a personal trainer, maybe you can't afford a personal trainer or you can't afford certain gym memberships. Maybe some of you are using tools or techniques you've learned previously from other trainers, looking on things at YouTube and kind of building out your own regimen, kind of being resourceful that way. But again, it's still your own manifestation. It's still your own energy you're using to transform your body or transform your health. Um, doesn't have to be that, but that's just um, an example of how that energy can manifest. And the Eight of Pentacles, again, doing the work. That's literally the card of work. Um, one foot in front of the other, being, being very practical and strategic and realistic in your expectations and um, being patient as well. Earth energy is slower. So knowing that certain things will take time and um, you know, you're getting acquainted with the work required for that. Beautiful energy. Um, and like I said, your self notice here, Taurus. So you're comfortable with you know, putting in hard work. Um, all of the earth signs are so and Taurus is you know the Venus ruled earth sign so wanting to really be um, comfortable and you know beautiful and healthy in doing that so this is gorgeous energy look at your life purpose cards you have support love and light and options yeah so you're getting the support you need um, this could be um, support in your daily routines you know getting maybe an accountability partner or maybe some of you are in groups that you know you channel support from offer support love and light that's the energy you're in you could be um again going back to the groups or like the partnerships getting love and you know guidance from that and options options could be coming in for you options to do things differently um, with that options i'm getting more of an energy of opportunities not just options so, you know, when you work on yourself, when you work on your body, you just automatically go to a higher vibration. And so with that, um, more things come in. You do have work energy here. So it could be opportunities in your work, um, whether that's a brand new job or just more opportunities to do more and currently what you're doing, which is going to bring in that abundance, bring in that, um, you know, higher self-worth, higher value, more money, more assets, which is a Taurian energy there. So I love this. I hope something resonates and I'll see you in the next one. All right. Third pile. This is the Aqua Obsidian. Your oracles are Gemini, Sagittarius, and Jupiter. Gemini, Sagittarius, and Jupiter. Now, Gemini and Sag are polar opposites. The nodes are transiting out of Sag, Gemini, and going into Taurus, Scorpio, you, Scorpio. And Jupiter is the ruler of Sag. He's just transited into Pisces, his feminine domicile. Interesting, because in the Libra reading in that last pile, it was Aqua Leo for, with the two sign cards, and they're polar opposites. And now I have Gemini, Sag, two polar opposites. Interesting. So, um... Some of you could have um, prominent Jupiter 
uh, I'm sorry, not prominent Jupiter. You could have a strong Jupiter placement in your natal chart, or you could have Gemini Sag placements in your chart. Those signs could be significant for you. Um, if not, I think this is just maybe significant of what I just mentioned with the nodes transiting out of those two signs. And the past 18 months could have been um, very um, transformative for you, very somewhat turbulent. Um, but, you know, I think things have... Um, maybe shifted for you in terms of how you communicate um, your own personal ideologies, your belief systems. I could say that for the collective, you know, based on what's happened with the pandemic and the, the different things we've seen in the media and the kinds of communications we've seen just collectively. But this could be for you internally and personally as well. Jupiter is the planet of expansion, philosophy, higher learning. Maybe some of you are in school, going back to school. Um, if not, you just could be doing your own like um, short term um, informative things like watching, you know, certain uh, YouTubers or podcasts or reading traditional books to expand your knowledge, um, traveling as well, planning to travel, experience different cultures and um, perspectives that could be coming in. Beautiful for your North Node because Scorpio is so deep and um, evolutionary and, you know, intense. You know, I think it's, you know, in Scorpio, the traditional ruler of Scorpio is Mars. So it is action packed as well. So I think many of you plan to take action with um, new insights in some way, whether you're teaching or you're building out new products or services or endeavors or just making changes in your own life too, right? Because um, this is a general reading. So wherever your North Node is and whatever it's aspecting is going to be more um, specific to what exactly these changes and what you're learning could be about. Let's look at your tarot cards. We have five of water, that's Scorpio, your energy, and the Mars, like I was just mentioning. Five of cups, um, the lovers, there's Gemini again, so definitely could have um, Gemini energy strong in your chart. And then Scorpio, wow, you're in this pile, you're in the reading. Okay, so this is a loud reading. Whenever I'm doing a sign and the energy for that sign comes out, I always say it's going to be like a loud message from spirit. So you have um, two major arcanas here as well. The Lovers and Scorpio and Gemini is here twice. Um, Gemini is also duplicity and, you know, binary things, like two sides of a coin. So you could be looking at something from two different perspectives now, especially with the Five of Cups here. Five of Cups is like, you know, feeling remorseful, feeling sad, um, kind of looking at, so the traditional tarot, you know, it's an image of a cloaked person looking down at three spilled over cups and two cups are behind them, filled up and upright. So now you could be looking at maybe what hasn't gone right in your life or what you perceive to, has, to have not gone the way you wanted it to. And what are the lessons from that? Jupiter, Sag, right, learning. Um, Gemini is learning too, but it's more again, short term in the moment learning. So, you know, what lessons, what experiences have um, you gleaned higher knowledge from or have you gleaned like new perspective in terms of what you're experiencing in your life and you know how has that maybe shaped or transformed your own idea ideologies i can't even say it <laughs> ideologies and um belief systems about life about you know humanity about yourself and your human experience um you know and just kind of broadening that um, if that doesn't resonate you know with the lover's card here it's just a choice it could be a choice in love a choice in you know, you choosing to, you know, love one passion over another because, you know, I'm getting that with that Gemini energy, choosing to go the distance or stay more um, local because Sag is long term, long range travel. Gemini is more short term, like, you know, going from here to your job type travel. Sag is like literally could be traveling across like overseas international travel is that um, energy of Sag. Um so yeah, you could be deciding that. And that Scorpio energy, again, the nodes are shifting into your sign. So there could be things being sweeped out, like things that are not working, five of cups, things that just need to go out now. And spirit may be offering you the opportunity to choose for yourself, the lovers, or tower moment. You know, it'll just be, you know, removed for you. And those typically don't feel very well, but they're needed. So this is beautiful energy in terms of, getting clarity and getting more in alignment with where you're going um like i said either there's kind of two different energies and storylines i'm getting here but again it's a general reading so just apply what resonates um i do think deep transformation and and changes are coming in just 
again, collectively as well as you because your nodes are in this, um, are in going to be on that eclipse axis. So we already had one eclipse in the Taurus Scorpio axis, the end of 2021, more coming up through 2022. So you might see things. These also could be time markers. Gemini and Sag season this year could be time markers where huge changes happen for you. And your life purpose cards are practice, sensitivity, and family. So some of you could be super sensitive to, um, at this time. Um, practice, really that kind of ties in with the learning and family. Maybe some of your beliefs and um, you know what's changed for you has been around your family system, right? Family lineage, um, ancestry, that kind of thing. You'd be learning more about ancestry, maybe traveling back to like a homeland, like where you come from. That could be something that's going on for you too. Beautiful energies for your North Node though, because it's really about going deep, going beneath the surface and, you know, bringing it, you know, an end to things that are evolving for you so that what is meant to evolve can. All right, I'm going to leave it there. I hope something resonates. If it does, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Website is linked below for a personal reading. I hope to see you guys in the next one and be sure to thrive. Bye.